All right, guys. Somebody had asked me to uh, go over a Crocon Tetra four gas air monitor, uh, and so I'm doing that for them. I thought throw it on here for for everyone to see. Um, uh, but this, by no means, is uh, the way that everybody should use it, or uh, you know, mandated by anything. Uh, you definitely need to go through the manual and uh, check your local regulations depending on what it is you're doing if it's confined space uh, check uh, the OSHA regulations and abide by all regulations of course for whatever you guys are doing and staying safe there but there there is a uh, the manual is online provided by Crocon uh, I will put a link in the description to that uh, user manual definitely need to go through that there's good stuff in there and uh, and understand how to use this air monitor this here is the uh, Crocon Tetra, okay? Currently I have it hooked up with a hose, so if you're going to drop it into a hole to uh, check the atmosphere there, that's what you would do. Um, it simply attaches to the unit itself, and uh, the hose attaches uh, to that plate for the intake. The air goes in here, the air comes out here. Uh, I already had this attached, so I'll go ahead and take it off so you can kind of see what it looks like without it. You just take this screw right here off, and that uh, that plate comes off. There's just a little piece right here that goes into that slot. You push it down, and then you screw it, screw it right back on there. And that's how you do it. It's pretty, pretty simple there. Okay, so I'll throw those back in here. Cases are always good, guys, to keep these uh, monitors. They're not, they're not cheap. Uh, so protect them. Make sure they stay good and working so they can work for you. Um, the things that we keep in ours, I do not have the charger sitting here. Uh, it's in the other room where we, where we do keep these units charged because we have several of them. But uh, normally when we go somewhere, the charger is in there. Your calibration certificate, need to make sure you've got that and that it is current, that it is not out of calibration. That's very important. Um, and then here's the unit itself. So what you're looking at here is the operator LCD screen. That's where all your information is going to come from. This here is the operator button. This is how you actually uh, go through the menus. Uh, this is the IR communications port, uh, which is used for calibration and, and, and recording the logs and stuff. So uh, it's probably not, not something that you guys will be using unless uh, uh, you're getting into calibrations or logs or anything like that. That's something we do here quite a bit. Um, these two here, the the alarm LEDs, they'll flash red and blue uh, when there's an alarm at activated or during the test sequence here. You'll see here in a minute that it'll be uh, they'll be flashing. You've seen the front panel where the intake is, and again where the outlet is for the air, and then a standard belt clip. You just, just enable slide in there, and then you can bring that down to make sure it locks in place. Belt clip also keeps your uh, serial number there. Uh, so you can see it and it will briefly show up on the screen as well when we turn it on. So, uh, and I've got me a little cheat sheet of everything I wanted to talk about as we do all this. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that on um, at this point. So your operator button, you're just going to hold that down until you see the alarm light come on. You can let go at this point. It's going to get pretty loud here. You can click it once to go ahead and silent it, silence that, but it's uh, testing the alarms at that point, making sure the lights work. It does vibrate when it, the alarm's active, so it's making sure that mechanism's working. And of course, the audio alert that you heard, it's pretty loud. Um, it goes through right here, it shows you today's date, when your next calibration is due. Um, and again, it showed the uh, serial number. Here on your main screen, of course, it's uh, it's warm. It's doing its warm-up process here, so you just need to give it a second. Um, and during this process, it's going to ask you to zero out the sensors. One thing that you need to make sure you do is it's very important uh, that these air monitors and all air monitors are turned on in a clean environment. As you can see right there, it says auto zero click to confirm. So I go ahead and tell it so. So it'll zero out those sensors because we're in clean air uh, just like I was saying that if you if you were to put this in a non-clean environment uh, that may possibly had CO it's going to zero out to that air 
So once you get into wherever you're going, whether it be a confined space or whatever environment that you're going to be in, uh, that's going to be off. That's that's not a good thing. You want to make sure that these these are reading correctly for you. Um, just to show the heads up display, of course, you see your four gases here. Uh, we'll start with the top right, which is O2. That's oxygen. It's 20.9. I have had people call me and say that they can't get their their O2 to zero out. Well. Um, Guys, if, if you have zero oxygen, you, you may not be calling me right now. So we, the 20.9 is, is actually uh, normal oxygen percentage for normal breathing air. Uh, so that's, that's your normal environment. If it's 20.9, you're looking good. Uh, this particular air monitor has LEL, which is your lower explosive limit, uh, CO, and H2S. So uh, those should be zero in wherever you're starting it. So you see up here in the top right hand corner that it's uh, giving the little blinking um, OK. That means everything's good. Uh, it's not an alarm or anything. That will be replaced by a little bell looking symbol if there's an alarm going off. If this thing has reached uh, uh, a certain level of a toxin or, or anything it's looking for, oxygen's not high enough or it's too high, uh, that alarm will go off and that'll be there. The next item here is your pump indicator. Uh, that, that item there, and I'm trying to make sure that you guys can see it. Uh, it spins, lets you know that that pump is working, that it's on. And of course your battery level indicator is at the bottom right here. We'll go through the, uh, the menu. To bring up the menu, you actually need to double tap the button and it comes up. The first option is gas, so I can select that. Of course, that's the screen we're already on, is the gas screen. Um, I think there may be a little glare on the video, so I'm going to try to turn it a little bit to see if I can't do a little better for you guys. Double click again, bring up the menu. There it is there. And then uh, you can just double, you just single click to go through the menu. And then when you get to what you want, so we'll check peak at this point, which we shouldn't. Okay, so our peak on this one has been the oxygen that was down to 20.8 at one time. And we had a CO, uh, uh, one part per million of CO. It's asking me if I want to clear. But I'm going to tell it no. I'm going to leave those values in there. If you wanted to clear out your peaks uh, so you could keep a record of, of your new values on, on peak value, you could have done it at that time. To go back to uh, gas, again, we go to the mon menu by double clicking. Single click to get to where you want to. Uh, of course, we were wanting to go back to gas, which was the first one. And double click again. You can see that all your your information's there, your reading readings that you're getting. Um, I'll go back in the menu. The uh, oops. TWA's time weighted average, and I just skipped past it. We'll go back to it. There we go. And uh, of course, it's not set up for any of those. And then again, if we need to zero out at any time, you have your ability to zero here. Fresh, fresh air question mark it's asking you are you in fresh air click to confirm there you go and we've zeroed it out again which was it was fine to begin with um, to turn this off what you're going to do is you're going to hold down your operation button here it says off in two one zero you ask you to release the button you let go and that's it it's off um, other things to keep in mind is charging um, guys we, we leave ours on the chargers uh, just to stay charged because the the sensors that are inside this unit they they do constantly draw uh, a charge um, a load I guess you'd say um, because they, they require energy at all time it, it just because you turn off the unit doesn't mean the sensors stop they have to have that to stay alive uh, or you'll find yourself replacing sensors uh, quite often and that's not that's not cheap um, so that's, that's your charging port back here in the back uh, just keep it plugged in when not in use and you'll be doing fine there is an indicator that comes up in the middle of the screen here when you have it plugged in there'll be a little battery charger looking or excuse me a little battery uh, icon and that way you know you have it plugged in as soon as you plug it in the red light will come on here at the uh, alarm briefly and go out so you make sure that you've got that thing charging. Guys, when you have um, the attachment on the device and um, 
and you're using the hose, uh, it takes time for that air to to come into the sensors. Okay, it has to travel up all this holes, excuse me, hose, and um, and get into the sensors and be read. So that there's there's a time delay. We 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 wait several seconds per foot. Um, I know that in the manual, Crocon's manual, uh, they suggest uh, doing a response time test so that uh, you know how long, whatever hose that you're using, you know how long it takes for that, uh, for that to respond. Um, so that's, that's important to know that you're not going to be able to just throw that hose down in a hole, in a hole and, and then look at it and be like, oh, we're good, pull it back in. Yeah, I mean, it takes time for that air to travel in there, so make sure that, uh, that you guys are doing that. Uh, the other thing uh, that I wanted to cover was um, during alarm, if the alarm goes off, um, you guys can reset that alarm. Um, say you figured out what the issue was, you've corrected it, uh, you ventilated, whatever it is you needed to do. Um, the levels have dropped. Once the levels have dropped to a, a safe level, uh, you can press your operator button to, uh, to uh, silence the, that alarm. Okay, um, And there you go. Oh, logging. Um, the, that's a great feature on these is uh, is it actually logs the data. It will actually log the data of the environment that you've been in. So if you started getting uh, CO, carbon monoxide, for instance, uh, it will log those levels and it'll keep a nice little log that those are, are able to uh, be downloaded if you have the proper equipment to do that via the IR uh, communications port there. So that's what you want to look at there. But that's, that's it in a nutshell. Uh, do not turn these things on in an unclean environment. Uh, that is a sure way to kill these things. And uh, also make sure that you guys are not, um, you, you're, getting, you're, you're getting false readings if you do that. So it's very important that, uh, that, you, don't, that you don't do that. Uh, we, also try to, we also practice uh, bringing them back into a, a, a clean environment before uh, we turn them off. Uh, that pumps flowing through there and uh, I, I just, it just doesn't seem like a good idea to uh, be sucking in uh, contaminants and then turn that pump off and the unit off with those, cam those contaminants saturated in the sensors. So uh, I would practice that as well.